Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. I'm outside today to test the return to home function on the brand new Mavic Air 2. I've had a lot of questions about it on the channel, so I thought I'd head outside on a beautiful day like today and show you exactly how it works. Now, a few things to keep in mind around the Mavic Air 2 and return to home, because it behaves differently than most of the quads you're probably flying today, and it's conditionally based. And what I mean by that is the Mavic Air behaves differently depending on how far away from its original home point it is. And I'll explain those three scenarios in a minute, but before I do, return to home is something that a lot of people ask about. Return to home is a safety feature built into the quad that can typically trigger in one of three ways. You can trigger it manually. So if you're out flying and you've lost sight of the quad, maybe you don't know exactly where it is and you're getting a little panicked, you can hold the button down on the controller or you can hit the return to home button on the application and the drone will typically elevate to the height you have set in the application for the return to home height. It'll spin to face the home point. It'll fly back to the home point. And once it's happy, it's over the home point. It'll descend and land almost exactly where it took off because this quad has precision landing built into it. And I haven't tested that yet, but I'm going to test that as part of today's clip, but it should land almost exactly where it took off. And that's 99% of the time, what you're going to see when you hit the return to home key. Now, the other two scenarios can be triggered by the quad. So for example, if you're flying and the batteries get to a critical low, percentage, like 10%, the drone's going to say, you know what? Rick's not paying attention to me, and I'm not going to make it home if he fools around any longer out here over this lake. I'm going to take control of the quad, and I'm going to fly home and land it and just let him know that he should be paying attention to that battery level. So if you get down to 10%, the drone is going to fly home. You're going to see beeping on your controller, and return to home is going to get triggered. And again, if you're beyond that 20 meters away, it's going to actually do what I just said. It's going to elevate to the height you have set, and it's going to fly home. The second scenario with the quad is if you lose connection between your controller and the quad, the quad at that point is essentially untethered. It's flying out there with nobody controlling it, and the quad knows, I'm going to give him 11 seconds, but if he doesn't make the connection, I have to assume he's either fainted or the controller's gone dead or something happened. I better get home. So the drone at that point is going to trigger its own internal return to home as a safety measure, and it's going to fly home and land. So all three of those scenarios are exactly the same if you're more than 20 meters away. It's going to elevate to whatever height you've set as a return to home height, spin to face home, come back and land naturally. And again, that's the most, most common way that return to home works. The difference with the Mavic Air 2 is that there are two other scenarios based on distance where that behavior changes, and it's important to understand those. So if you're within 20 meters away, so for example, if I fly it out 15 meters and I hit return to home, it's not gonna elevate. It's gonna fly home at whatever height it happens to be flying at currently. So that's normally not a problem if you have crash avoidance turned on because if you're out there beyond this and there's a tree between us, it'll see the tree and elevate over the tree to get back here. But you need to know that because that can be a really dangerous situation. So if you're within 20 meters, it's just gonna fly back, it's not gonna elevate. If you're within five meters, that's where it gets really tricky. The drone at that point isn't gonna elevate and it's not gonna fly back at the height it's currently at, it's just gonna land. And that can be really scary because if you're out over a lake and for some reason return to home gets triggered because your battery levels get low, the drone's going for a swim. There's nothing you can do to prevent that. You can hit the return to home cancel and try to fly it back, but if you're not paying attention, you're going to put that drone down in the water. So it's really important you understand that. It's also important that if you're out in the field and you've got tall grass and the drone at that point decides to descend and land, it's going to end up in some cornfield someplace and you're going to have to go out there and find it, probably with some broken propellers on it. So five feet, it's going to land. Within 20 feet, it's just gonna fly back at the height it's at. If you're beyond 20 feet, which is a normal scenario for return to home, it's gonna to elevate to the height you've set, spin, come back, and land where it took off. The other thing that people ask a lot about is what if you're flying above the height you have set for the return to home and the return to home's triggered? It's not gonna to descend to the height. It's just gonna fly back at whatever height it happens to be at as long as it's above that return to home height. So what I'm gonna do now is test those three scenarios for you as well as precision landing. So I'll go through those in a second. The first one, I'm gonna put it out probably five meters and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the return to home and we'll watch it crash into the grass over here. Now the grass is really short, so it shouldn't be a problem. Then I'm gonna take it out less than 20 meters, hit return to home and have it fly back and land. And then we'll go for the granddaddy of return to home. So I'll send it downfield. I've set the return to home height at 70 feet. I'll hit the return to home key. It'll elevate the 70 feet, spin to come back, come back and land on the mat. And then I'll test the precision landing because I really wanna see if that works as well. So stay tuned and we'll get started with the testing. First up is the five meter test. Now what I'm gonna do is elevate the quad to about shoulder height and then I'll send it forward maybe 10 feet or so off the mat because remember, I have to keep it within five meters for the test to actually work and then I'll trigger the return to home. Now what I expect will happen is the quad should start to slowly descend ever so gently into that beautifully soft grass beneath it and then spin down its rotors. 
And as it starts at descent, remember, there's a lot of protections built into this quad. The Mavic Air is an incredibly smart quad, so crash avoidance is turned on, which means those bottom sensors, both the optical and digital sensors, are looking for obstructions beneath the quad. Now, that won't be a problem here in the field because it's wide open, but if you were flying out in the forest and you had a lot of trees around you and it started descending, you'd want to make sure the quad would look beneath it to see a tree underneath it so then it would actually navigate to an area where it could land safely so it didn't park your quad 80 feet up in a tree. So that's the first thing that's going to happen. Now, if it gets closer to the ground and it doesn't see any obstructions and gets really close to the ground, terrain detection kicks in where it's actually looking at the ground beneath it to make sure it's safe to land there. Now, again, not a problem because it's a wide open field and it's nice and soft except for that soccer net over there. I'll try to stay away from that. But if I were landing in an area that had like a big pile of sharp rocks or maybe a, I don't know, a cornfield someplace, it would detect that as dangerous terrain and it would stop descending and it would turn control back over to the pilot to allow you to navigate it to a safe area to actually land it. So incredibly smart quad. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to spin up the rotors. I've got no warnings and no planes in the area. I'll take it up four or five feet. Pretty good. And I'll just take it forward a little bit because again, I can't gauge five meters. That's probably 10 feet. All right, now I'm going to hit the return to home. Let's see what happens. It's saying landing. So it's coming down, slowly descending. It's checking the terrain underneath it. It's landing perfectly, nice and gently, and it's spinning down the rotor. So it did exactly what we expected it to do. What's interesting about that is normally you'll never see this situation because return to home always happens for me anyway when I'm really far away and I've not paid attention to the battery levels or some reason I lose connection or if I get panicked then it happens. And maybe I've lost sight of it over a tree or something and I want it to come home. It's far enough away where it's gonna elevate and fly back home. This is a little bit dangerous, again, if you're on the shore of a lake or something and it triggers an automatic return to home and you're expecting it to show back up on the shore of the lake and you're slowly watching it descend into the water out there. So in that case, stop it and return it to home manually. But it's important to understand that because it is kind of a new thing that a lot of pilots get confused by. Now, stay tuned and I'll do the 20 meter test next. Next up is the 20 meter test and here's where things start to get really interesting. So for this test, I'll elevate the quad to about 25 feet and I'll let it sit there for a couple of seconds to record its home point, and then I'll send it downfield, making sure I don't go past that 20 meter edge, and I'll hit the return to home key. Now what I expect will happen is the quad will stay exactly where it is from an elevation standpoint, it'll spin to face the home point, race back at a pretty good clip, when it gets over the home point, it should spin back to the original orientation it's sitting in right now when it took off facing downfield, slowly descend, and it should land almost exactly where it took off because the quad uses precision landing. Now a couple of things are happening when it's recording that home point. The first one is, when it sits there, it's marking its GPS location in 3D space, so it knows exactly what coordinates it's sitting at for its home point for GPS. The problem with GPS, though, is it's pretty cool, but it's not greatly accurate, so it's got a little bit of slop in it, which means it'll get it roughly back to the home point, but if all it's using is GPS, it's going to come down and it can land quite a bit either side of that mat. The second thing it does, which really enables a precision landing, is the downward-facing sensors take a picture of the area below it on takeoff. So when it's setting its home point, it not only records a GPS coordination, it's looking down and taking a picture of that home point. So it uses GPS to get it back in the rough area, but once it starts descending, it's constantly making minor adjustments to try to match that picture up to land exactly where it took off. So it'll be kind of cool to see how close it comes. So let me send it downfield. I've got no warnings and no aircraft in the area. I'll spin up the rotors. Now I've got to take it up at least seven meters to give it the best shot of recording the home point. Perfect, there's not a lot of wind, it's not being bounced around. All right, that's probably good. Let me take it downfield a little bit. Now again, I don't want to take it too far, I gotta stay within 20 meters, 60 feet, that's pretty close. Uh, yeah, that's good. All right, so let me hit the return to home key. Go home. Go home. All right, so it's spinning back towards the mat. It found the mat, and it's coming back at a pretty good clip. And it's right over the mat and it's slowing down. All right, so it's right over the mat at this point, a little bit far this way. So the GPS got it back to the home point. It's spinning around to face its original orientation and it's way off the mat, but it's making adjustments coming down. All right, so here's where the precision landing kicks in. And man, is it making adjustments on the way down. It's coming down right on top of that H. This is so close. I can't believe this. Perfect, it's perfect. It came down right on top of that H. Now again, <laughs> the GPS coordination would be mind-blowing enough to get it back to its home point, which gives you good assurance that you're not going to lose your quad. But the fact that it's looking at a picture when it's coming down, matching that picture up with the terrain below it to make those minor adjustments to land right on top of that H just blows my mind because you've got this incredibly smart robot that's flying around. And I'm betting you at this point, 
Elon Musk couldn't land a missile that close to the takeoff point. So anyway, precision landing's working. The 20 meter test looks like it's 100% like they claim it would be. Now the next one is gonna be the really exciting one because I'm gonna send it way downfield, way up in the air, and we're gonna hit the return to home key. And it should elevate to the height that we've set in the application, spin to face home, come home, and land again, almost exactly where it took off. So stay tuned for the third test. This last scenario is the big kahuna, and it's a situation you're gonna find yourself in most often. Let's pretend for a second you're out flying, and you're way out over a lake someplace. You're 1,500 feet out, and you see an interesting flock of duck that you start following, and you lose track of exactly where your quad is, so you're getting a little bit panicked, and you're thinking, I need that quad to come back, and you trigger the return to home. Now, what should happen that far out and that high up is the quad should elevate to whatever height you've got set in the application, so it's spin facing back to where it took off, fly back at a pretty good clip, spin back to its original location when it gets over the landing mat, and come down and land almost exactly where it is. And because it's got precision landing, it should almost land right there in the middle of the H. So what I'm going to do is spin it up, send it downfield about 250 feet. I'll keep it about 40 feet in the air to try to keep it in frame, and we'll see what happens. Now, I'm going to use the launch button on the application. Launch. Spin up the rotors, and it should launch. I gotta hold it, sorry. All right, rotors are spinning up. Home, point has been updated. home point's been updated. It's pretty happy with that. I don't know what it's doing there. It's thinking about it. All right, it's got its home point set. Looks good. Let me send it downfield and elevate. All right, so I'm up to about 30 feet in the air, about 150 feet downfield, 200 feet. All right, 250 feet downfield, about 22 feet off the ground. Now I'm going to hit the return to home key. Let's see what happens. Let's listen. Go home. Go home. Okay, it's elevating. All right, 30 feet, 45 feet, 50 feet, 70 feet. All right, so it stopped at 70 feet. It spun around. I can tell from the camera view. It's coming back. Boy, is that moving. It's, it's really, really moving. All right, it's coming back at a good clip. Now, when the GPS coordination senses it's above the mat, it should stop it or slow it down. All right, it's slowing down already. About 20 feet out. It's slowly creeping up on the mat, and I'm almost over top of the mat, and it stopped. Okay, it stopped. Now it's making adjustments this direction. It's not happy yet, and now it is because it's spinning. I can tell it's over its home point. It's spinning back to face the orientation of the way it took off, but it seems like it's off the mat. So it's coming down nice and slow. Hopefully the precision landing is going to kick in, and that picture it took of the landing mat will help it navigate on top of the mat. Ooh, it's behind the mat by quite a bit, and it's not really making any adjustments on the way down. Wait a minute, it moved a little bit there. Oh, come on forward, get it forward. Get this way, get this way. We're all rooting for you. No, oh, it's moving, it's moving. Oh, this is so exciting. All right, all right. A little bit more just thought. I want to get in there and push it a little bit. Man, is that close. That is so close. There's a pretty good wind blowing this direction. All right, it's off the mat. It's off the mat. But listen, there's a wind blowing it when it's coming down. I think it's incredible that it was 250 feet downfield, 45 feet in the air, and it came back and almost landed on the mat. So it isn't precision landing exactly, but I'm going to blame a lot of it on the wind. And honestly, when it comes down that close, I'm going to try and land it on my own anyway, but let me try the precision landing a few more times, and if it gets better, maybe I'll edit the clip and put that one in and just say that it landed with precision landing. But for me, I love the fact that it gets it back close to the home point, and I can land it when it gets there. All I care about is I've lost it chasing those ducks, and I needed to get it back because I want to land it safely. RTH brings it back in view so I can actually take it, land it, and put it down where I need to land it. Now, that's pretty much all I had for today. So thanks an awful lot for watching. I hope you guys found value in this clip. If there's something you have questions on, drop those in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I will tell you, the weather's going to be beautiful the next couple of days, so I'm going to be out flying like crazy. So I may not get back to emails as quickly as I normally do, but send those in anyway. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family. We have so many different things coming up this summer with a whole lot more clips being reviewed. We've got a ton of giveaways too. I've got a bunch of drones are going to be given away. So if you're looking to get a free drone, subscribe to the channel. You can enter those contests. And as I say every time, if you guys are finding value in these clips, I'm going to continue to do them. I love doing these kind of clips, investigating technology and explaining it to you. This question came from about 70 people on the channel. So again, if you have questions, drop them in the comments below. If you need accessories for your Mavic Air 2 or some other quad that you're flying today, we have a ton of accessories on the website. We ship the same day you place the order. We can get it to you faster than Amazon, and we stand behind everything we sell. So if you need accessories, give us a try. We'll take care of you. And that's it for today. So thanks an awful lot for watching, and until next time, happy flying.